speaker is a recent U of M grad from the Energy Systems Engineering and Entrepreneurship programs. He is a teacher, practitioner, and investor in entrepreneurial science. Please welcome Stephen Sherman. When most people think of entrepreneurship, they think of sexy ideas, brilliant founders, pitching for venture capital, 40-page business plans, tech crunch articles, and business cards that say CEO. And while the media may paint this glorified picture, the reality is startups and new products fail. In fact, studies have found that over 90% of startups and new products fail at an average cost of about $1.5 million to fully develop and launch. The number one reason for all this? No market need. Instead of this wasteful and bloated traditional form of entrepreneurship, we're working on a new paradigm of entrepreneurial science. We assume nothing and test everything and help entre entrepreneurs become entrepreneurs. The key word is experiment. <laughs> Rather than finding, starting with a, a, better, a, plan a, a better plan A, it's about finding a better plan along the way. And in fact, two thirds of successful companies report drastically changing their plans from before they started. Tonight I'm gonna to talk about the why and how of four experiments to get started in entrepreneurial science, helping us move from rhetorical reasoning to empirical testing. There's a joke about a business plan that it's a, doc, a 40 page document that investors make you write but never actually read. Instead, we wanna use this one page lean canvas to document our nine riskiest hypotheses so we can systematically test them one by one. This lean canvas also emphasizes the three lenses of innovation, customer desirability, business viability, and solution feasibility. By starting with the customer, we can address that number one failure mechanism of no market need. Unfortunately, most founders still start with and focus on the solution, stating build it and they will come. In reality, we really need to be asking ourselves, if we build this, will people actually come? To answer that question, we need to get out of the building and employ customer discovery. This involves interacting with and talking with our customers firsthand to really understand their problems and what it's like to be in their shoes. All too often, people dismiss this and cite this common quote supposedly said by Henry Ford. If I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. And while it's true, customers are not responsible for determining their solution, that's your job as the entrepreneur. However, when prompted the right way, they can give a ton of key insights into their problem and desires to which you as the entrepreneur can create and capture value around. So how do we talk to customers? There's a right way and a wrong way. Uh, here's the right way in 15 seconds. Focus on the problem, listen more than you talk, ask open-ended questions, minimize questions about future behaviors, ask about real examples and stories, and always ask why. After we've done this 100 times, it's time to test our solution in an experiment. The key takeaway here is to sell or build what we can sell and not sell what we can build. One experiment for this is known as the smoke test, a simple landing page with our marketing copy that we drive traffic to to answer the key question of, do people actually care enough to click buy or sign up? We have to build nothing to test this in the background, yet learn a lot about the demand. After we validated the, the demand, we can move on to manually building a minimum viable product. By doing things behind the scenes and manually, we can deliver value for our early adopters and learn a lot about how they actually use the product. Now, there are a lot of ways to do this, including the Wizard of Oz MVP, the Concierge MVP, pre-order sales, and just simply starting with a single high-value feature. Many multi-billion dollar companies have slowed down and started by doing things that don't scale this way. Most people are turned off by MVPs because they're not perfect. That's okay because at this early of a stage, everyone is not your customer anyways. We wanna start with early adopters that can begin with our minimum viable product and piece together our roadmap to our product uh, vision. The, I've had to glance over MVPs, but the key takeaway is nail it, then scale it. In order to be a billion dollar company, we need to first start by being a one dollar company. When you are able to overlap customer, problem, and solution, remember that traction trumps everything. The idea doesn't matter, 
ignore non-risky assumptions, and don't follow vanity metrics. Instead, continue to experiment and grow. The end result of all this is validated innovation, and um, you avoid building something nobody wants, saving our most important and scarcest resource, our time. Thank you.